we are here gathered to know about the laws of returns. In economics, laws of returns play important role. It is necessary to know laws of returns in order to find out producer's equilibrium. What is producer's equilibrium? Producer equilibrium is a stage where producer get maximum total production. So the objective of all producers under perfect competition market is to obtain maximum total production. Alfred Marshall established law, laws of returns. Laws of returns are classified nowadays into two parts. Number one, classical views of laws of returns. And number two, modern views of laws of returns. Classical views of laws of returns is explained by Alfred Marshall in his book Principles of Economics in 1890. He says that when we analyze the laws of returns, we will take two factors, labor and capital, and capital will be constant. Only one factor, labor, will be variable. When we increase labor, there will increase production, no doubt. But that increased production will be in not a similar manner. In the first state, when we will increase labor by 10%, production will increase by more than 10%. After some time, if we increase labor by 10%, production will increase exactly by 10%. Again, after some time, if we increase labor by 10%, production will increase but by less than 10 percent. These are the three laws of returns. First is known as law of increasing returns. Second is known as law of constant returns. And third is known as law of diminishing returns. Look on the board. This is classical law of returns developed by Alfred Marshall. Production curve is just inverted U same. Inverted U same. First, production curve rises, reaches upward to the maximum, and remain constant for a while, and thereafter decreases. Inverted U same. This is called inverted U same. First stage, law of increasing returns. Second stage, law of constant return. Third stage, law of diminishing return. Labor is increased, production increases in three manner. Number one, production increases at increasing rate. Number two, production increases at constant rate. Number three, production increases in a diminishing rate. Just we see only labor is variable. Only one factor is variable. Rest factors constant. First stage, Labor increases by 10%, output increases by more than 10%. Why? Because economies are greater than this economy in the earlier stage of production. Then, in the second stage, when production has reached some stage of maturity, labor increases by 10%, output also increases just by 10 percent. What does it mean? It means economy and this economy both are exactly balanced one another. Economy is equal to this economy in this state. Third stage, labor increases by 10 percent, output increases by less than 10 percent. Why? Because all fixed factors are utilized optimum. In this stage, there is an increase in production, but at diminishing rate. Production, labor increases 10%, output increases less than 10%. This stage shows that these economies are increasing fastly. And economies are also there, but these economies are greater than economies. 
and therefore return is less than 10 percent. So these are the three laws called as classical laws of returns Alfred Marshall has given, established in 1890 in his book Principles of Economics. This theory, classical theory, worked for a long time from, 19, from 1890 to 1925. After Second World War, many new theories emerged and likewise book economics of imperfect competition emerged was published by Mrs. John Robinson. Edward Hastings Chamberlain published monopolistic competition. So the basis of uh, laws of returns was perfect competition. And that perfect competition is shattered. It is found that there in the real market there is no perfect competition, but it is imperfect competition, oligopoly, monopolistic competition. Therefore, this theory was revised. And the modern views of laws of returns is known as law of variable proportions. Any factor, labor or any, any factor which is variable, that will be clubbed under variable factor and another factor is fixed factor. So there are two types of factors of production using in production. What is production? Production means creation of utility. What is consumption? Consumption is destruction of utility. What is utility? Utility is the capacity of commodity to satisfy human wants. So production is the creation of utility. Therefore, the first thing is production. If there is production, consumption will automatically fall. Modern economist, Nobel Prize winner economist, Paul Samuelson, Nobel Prize winner economist Stigler, they were in favor of establishing modern version of laws of returns. That is known as law of variable proportions. Law, law, of, law of variable proportions. Law of variable proportion has three key words. Total production, average production, marginal production. The character of total production is in the first stage, it will be rising upward and convex, convex right, rightward. Then touch it, then the 45 degree line is tangent to production, total production curve at point F, and thereafter total production curve has changed its curvature. Its curvature is changed. Convex curve become convex upward. Here this is convex downward, here convex upward. It we call convex rightward, convex upward. And therefore the change of the curvature is noticed at point F. From F we draw a perpendicular to the next diagram which is attached to it. This uh, is H. This is H. This H is in first diagram and that H is here also. Look here, this is maximum. What is this? This is maximum average production. Average production maximization is most important because it is the dividing line between first stage and second stage. Average product maximization is most important in economics, microeconomics. Why? Because when average production is maximized, it will, it will divide dividing line between increasing returns and diminishing returns. In modern, this is called diminishing diminishing returns. And first one is known as increasing returns. Increasing returns. So if someone asks you that what is the signal that there is the end of increasing returns, 
or what is the signal when there is a start of diminishing return? Signal is average production. When average production is maximized, then this is signal that producer must be conscious that there is the end of increasing returns. Producer must be conscious that they are starting of diminishing return in the factory, in the farm. Must be conscious. But he, he will increase production and he will increase employment. He will increase production and he will increase employment till, till marginal production is zero. Till marginal production is zero at point M. At point M, marginal production is zero. When he will stop production, when marginal production is zero, and simultaneously, if we see here, look here, this perpendicular drawn from the total production. Here, total production is maximum. So total production is maximum. So what is the condition of equilibrium? Producer's equilibrium is obtained when marginal production is zero and total production is maximum. This is obtained at OM, OM employment, OM, OM employment of variable factor, OM employment of variable factor. This is called producer's equilibrium. A Stigler, this is John Robinson, Paul Samuelson, Boulding, in all uh, great economist and in their book you will find this diagram and its mathematical exposition is also here. This you can see in A.C. Chiang book, Mathematical Economics, A.C. Chiang book and you can find out that quantity production is a function of labor and capital. Production is a function of labor and capital. Capital is constant. Then only labor is operative. Then first condition, del Q by del L equal to zero. This is the first condition, necessary condition. And if we take second partial derivative, del L square Q del L square less than zero, this is second condition and that is sufficient condition. But if we write like this, Q is a function of x1, x2, x2 raised to the power zero, it means this is variable. This is variable factor and this is fixed factor. Power, power of x2 is zero. It means anything raised to power equal to zero is equal to one. One means constant. So the first condition will be del Q by del x1 is equal to zero. This is, this is related to classical. This is related to classical view. And this is related to modern view. If we take modern view, laws of variable proportion, we will replace L and K, we will write x1, x2, x2 raised to the power 0, and then we will write del a square q del x1 a square less than 0. This is the first condition of law of variable proportion. Law of variable proportion and this is second condition second condition that is maximum maximization maximization of total output total output so what is the result what is the result